Welcome to Growing in Christ Part 2, and if you would, go ahead, pull this out right now. If you weren't with us last time, this is what we call the wheel illustration. And just as we have a physical life, the picture that you see right now, it's a, it's a paradigm of our spiritual life. Christ is at the center. We're brand new. The Word of God in prayer is a vertical spoke that helps us communicate and get to know God. The horizontal spoke is our relationship with people, those that are in the family of God, fellowship, and those that aren't yet Christians that we can love and care for and serve. And finally, that outer wheel is whatever God shows you. He wants us by faith to obey. And in that process, the very life of Christ, it gets formed in you. And so uh, there's a song I love, it's In Christ Alone. It says, in Christ alone my, my ho is all my hope, my song, my light. And here's the question, what's it mean to be in Christ? Uh, if you'll notice, one of our key verses, and I'll encourage you to memorize this verse, is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the old passes away, behold, everything becomes new or all things, literally the verb is, is our becoming new. And so that when you're in Christ, here's the deal, you used to be in the world, you were in the kingdom of darkness. When you turned from your old life, your back on it, and received Christ by faith, your sins are forgiven, Christ takes up residence in your body in the person of the Holy Spirit. And three big major things happen. Now, these are big words, but I want you to start learning them. One, you're justified. That means there's a legal declaration by God the judge, and he stamps his gavel. And for all eternity, he says, all of your sin, past, present, and future, has been forgiven. It's been atoned for by Christ. And all of the righteousness of Christ is then given to you. And so now you are in Christ. In other words, it's a new relationship. Uh, this is the Apostle Paul's uh, favorite little phrase. You might read uh, Ephesians or Philippians or Colossians or any of these small books. And here's the picture he gives us. He says, imagine that this is you, okay? And let's imagine that this is Christ. This is a, a, a wood uh, sort of container from Africa. When you come to know Christ, you actually die with him, you're crucified with him, and then you're resurrected with him into new life. When you're in Christ, now God sees you just as he sees Christ. And I often, uh, when I do this, I'll have a, a big pail or a container of water, and I'll take this and I'll put it in the container. And what do we know? It's gonna float, right? However, if I took this pen and I put it in the water, what would happen? It would sink to the bottom. What I want you to understand is that because you've been co-crucified with Christ and you've risen with him and he's now placed you in his body, whatever is true of Jesus is now true of you. You have a new life, you have a new power. Now, the big word is justification. That's a legal point in time. But then you begin a journey called sanctification. Sanctification is the journey where what's already true of you in Christ, little by little becomes real in your life. You become more loving, more patient. You take on the characteristics of Jesus in everyday life. And the way that happens, if you look back at your wheel again, is that as you get into God's Word and talk with Him, as you relate with believers, as you share your life with unbelievers, as you just listen to Him and do what He says, your life is transformed as the Word of God in community creates the very life of Christ. Let me give you a picture that's really close to home. One of the greatest privileges in my entire life was the privilege of adopting two twin little boys. And I'll just talk about the older one, Eric. Uh, Eric was really shy, he was really afraid. But when Eric turned five years old, I adopted him. Uh, Eric's name used to be Eric Ball. Uh, in Dallas, Texas, when he was five years old, Eric Ball died. He doesn't have a social security number. He doesn't exist. There's no legal Eric Ball in all the world. He became Eric Ingram. He's in Ingram, if you will. Now, all that I have, uh, I just did my estate planning because it's different in California. Well, guess what? He's in my estate. Uh, he has an inheritance. Uh, all that I knew, all that I had was available to Eric. Now, just because Eric is in Ingram, it didn't change his eye color, it didn't change his personality, uh, it didn't change you know, the color of his hair. In other words, we are who we are, 
but the life of Christ were completely transformed. And here's the last point I want you to get. Paul says in Galatians 2.20, that's the other in Christ verse, it says this, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives within me. And this life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The Christian life isn't trying hard to earn God's favor. The Christian life is understanding who you are, what you already possess, and by faith, letting him live his life through you.